Hello, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina with Impressive Warrior. So thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to do a second Daily Dharma, possibly a third, we'll see. Um, trying to tap into multiple timelines, multiple groups within the collective, because not everybody's moving through their lessons and things with the same uh, situation. So learning different lessons at the same time. That's why things are timeless, where one message resonates with one group on one day and a different message from a different day will resonate with those people um, another time. Most of you know this. So, today, we're starting, instead of with, starting with the Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle deck, as usual, right now we're starting with the Tao Te Ching deck. And I did that with the first one. And this one, it popped out in the pre-shuffle. Number 45 came out. True perfection seems imperfect, yet it is perfectly itself. True fullness seems empty, yet it is fully present. True straightness seems crooked. True wisdom seems foolish. True art seems artless. The master allows things to happen. She shapes events as they come. She steps out of the way and lets the Tao speak for itself. So this seems to be acceptance and flow. And uh, not being so critical perhaps of something as it's developing. Not making any jumping to conclusions or making assumptions. And then we have eight underneath the deck. The supreme good is like water, which nourishes all things without trying to. It is content with the low places that people disdain. Thus, it is like the Tao. In dwelling, live close to the ground. In thinking, keep to the simple. In conflict, be fair and generous. In governing, don't try to control. In work, do what you enjoy. In family life, be completely present. When you're content to be simply yourself and don't compare or compete, everybody will respect you. So going from judgments and assumptions here and allowing flow seems to be related in this with um, staying present and grateful for what is instead of ex overextending yourself beyond. So thinking that the grass is greener elsewhere versus witnessing where you're actually at and all the abundance in the tiny um, priceless things that surround your life, your family, your work. You know, maybe your work sucks, but you get a, a predictable paycheck. Maybe you uh, don't get your way in a conflict, but in being fair and generous, there's respect, right? And not pushing the point, then there's compromise because the more we push, the other will pull. Um, so there's this 45 and 8. 45 is a 9, so 9 and 8. So there's something going on with um, putting something into proper perspective. Under the deck was conception before we started. I believe that's the I believe that's the 18 and we have 18 and two different cards in the previous one. We'll take that one. All right. First one out, heart chakra came out earlier. We'll put that one right at the top here. So non-judgment. Judgment may be does it, is judgment what blocks the throat chakra or third eye chakra? But I was wondering if it was the heart, but I believe heart chakra is blocked by loss or longing or something rather than presence and gratitude because gratitude, um, if you're anybody here is into the Dan Winter physics presentations, I do enjoy that he talks about the spirituality of physics. 
the application of quantum into actual lifespan and the emotional impact that that develops from alignment in that type of a way and with heart it's um gratitude is what unlocks the harmonics of the heart and in anger and hate block and and um creates walls against the recursive or the return of the healing it's like um to recycle our energy solar plexus is under the deck as we recycle our energy it comes back through it goes out into the world it comes back through and in a perfect world it's all healed and repaired and we let in the good and we get rid of the old after having processed and transmute and hopefully upgraded and leaving things better than we came uh that all sounds good but the there's something here with the chakras okay and oh these all came out in the previous solar plexus third eye and heart chakra with passion under there let's see what's on the top here compassion 15 that's a good heart based one i forgot to show it and compassion is the different the opposing force to judgment right frequency of compassion supports our ability to stand by others without judgment and be the divine mediator between heaven and earth spirit and matter so that unconditional love can flow from source through our heart and out into the world conception is actually the 16th card so that's fine 15 16 here interesting 13 coherence can I get 14 27 fertility so the the judgments that we hold uh, influence our heart obviously because if we believe it's um a let's say materialistic selfish uh hedonistic nihilistic society no belief no compassion then we're going to gauge our own life by that with our own suspicions our own cynicisms and we're going to block our heart because of our judgments we will conceive of thieves and uh control freaks and uh, simmering rage and others perhaps lack of understanding and compassion which may lead us to judging them about their judgments of us like oh I don't want to be around that person because I feel judged by them so is it that you feel judged by them or are you judging yourself based upon your assumptions of who or what or they are or what they have or something like that something either not having compassion yeah like the element of envy and self uh, what do i want to say um where we don't believe we are like we don't know who we are this misunderstanding leads to uh, the fertility of lower based emotions taking precedence over the heart chakra one more here Ooh. miracle i like to see that on the board so there's a breakthrough moment here where we are um moving away from judgments in some type of a way maybe there's a moment where we were judging another and we are witnessing them maybe in a moment of weakness or a breakthrough moment uh, that we witness somebody's humanity or we have in our own situation where perhaps we were making lots of money and then we've lost our job and now the humbling experience of having to go to um, a food bank or do the pl giving plasma thing or something um, I mean that's extreme right but I'm feeling like somebody here has really been through a lot 
of experiences. And this, this breakthrough moment is releasing, releasing something about the, um, yeah, true perfection seems imperfect. I feel like this is estimation of the self, yet it is perfectly itself. So if something is imperfect and and still it is just what it is, it's like I am what I am in the moment, right? Take me or leave me. I can't be any other way, but I'm always on the path of, of self-improvement, but I enjoy being authentic, right? And so true fullness, the fullness of self, are you feeling like you don't have enough? Are you feeling like others don't see you well enough or feel a certain way or understand or that you don't have enough um, opportunities or friends or, uh, yeah, there's some type of misunderstanding or something that's being broken through here where you're going to be able to use your energy to propel yourself forward and be seen for the compassionate individual that you want to be and maybe witnessing a heart opening moment like the miracle of childbirth for instance or like getting a pet for the first time and not having recognized how empty your your life was but then in the simple pleasures of a pet having your life just lit up again um, and witnessing how full your life can be when you take moments like that with a pet or 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 just filling your own life with uh, self-care and that beautiful feeling of sleeping in for another 20 minutes on a, a Saturday morning or or something like that so when you allow yourself to just empty your calendar sometimes then you can recognize the fullness of self that can relax and be present and just to be in the moment when and how full your life is when when you're just doing nothing instead of becoming bored or feeling like, oh, well, maybe I don't have um, a good uh, social life if I'm sitting in on a Friday night. But I tell you what, sometimes those Friday nights, I would, I would not want to do anything else except be in my own energy. And then the estimation of others, true, too. Uh, so true straightness seems crooked. So in our judgments of others and what they say or do or how they act, we can say, oh, well, I wouldn't choose that. Um, this person's going out to the bar, but I'm sitting here on Friday. That makes me better or worse than them. Um, I saw 1313 when I said that. Uh, these judgments may not be true because then we're, we may be judging someone going out and having fun with friends or whatever they're doing because of a feeling of lack of friendship or lack of belonging or connectivity in our own lives maybe that judgment that is coloring the reading for this group is is something that is elementary and just below the surface but it's a projection of judgment based on something we haven't gifted or recognized a need within ourselves true wisdom seems foolish true art seems artless so there's something here that you can take action on or express or or something that's going to be better received than you may believe you don't understand some type of a a thing about yourself that others do so what's being conceived of here this new miracle understanding the way to Put effort into something anew, a heart-based reality that is something unique to yourself. But having, um, yeah, self-judgment came through the other reading as well. But this one's more about judgment and flow in allowing ourselves to 
to honor the stillness, honor the moments, and to not judge those moments. There's something buzzing in my head right now. Maybe you need to unplug as well. Maybe there's a lot of um, that going on. Okay, under the deck. Oh, how interesting. This was the same one under the deck in the previous reading. Heart, home, compassion, and drifter, experiencing life as it comes. Yeah, maybe you're judging your path, being impatient. And then we had, um, in the hand, the universe is your partner coming up first. So experiencing life as it comes, being in the flow, and being able to receive the, the flow of something into our lives. If we're busy or rejecting things or judging things or overextending, we're not able to receive things as the gift that they are. And then we're seeing un that we're flipped upside down, the beloved radical acceptance and eye of the needle, intentionality, number 17. So, yeah, there's, um, there's something I feel the, the most key piece for some of us is going to be stemming or following the tap root of our judgments back to what do we think? Like, okay, let's take another example so that it can be um, easier to understand for anyone who doesn't see this yet. So let's take somebody who we think is lazy. We're out there busting our tail all the time, working, 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 putting pressure on ourselves, never feeling perhaps like we've done enough or that we're really checking off enough items off the daily, weekly, monthly to-do list or uh, lifetime goals and then so we're seeing someone else taking a break and we're like why is this person always on break they must be lazy everything must be handed to them I'm sure they don't have the struggles or maybe their childhood was easy maybe they were born into money oh they were so lazy um, but that's somebody who perhaps is in the flow recognizing the balance between recharging and receiving mode and then restoring their energy before knowing, well, where, where do I want to go next? What do I want to do next? Instead of jumping and running and spinning their wheels in 10 directions and making progress on zero, this person might take an hour rest and then tackle three projects and get them done like right away. So following that taproot down, if you're feeling overworked, it's easy to feel like others are lazy or like they're not contributors or like they had more opportunities than yourself. But more opportunities often comes through relaxing our, our field from judgment and to witness and understand how our own fertile mind causes us to either be distracted and um, running after every shiny thing and accomplishing nothing versus when we honor the heart's um, urges and limits, then miracles can start to happen in our life where we're receiving the help or receiving the divine inspiration like, oh, it's raining, I should go out and do this one thing now before everything gets rained on or maybe I like to weed in the rain, for instance. So there's many things you can do while it rains. I need to if we ever get rain here, we're having a drought right here. I'd like to paint the pole barn so it looks a little nicer here in the in the frame. But we'll get to these things. Um, maybe you're feeling that you are not accomplishing enough. You're putting maybe too much pressure on yourself. And there is a miracle activation happening within the heart space here that's going to allow you to understand how to make it through that next that next portal into the next leg of the journey here and it's by radical acceptance of of the heart in some type of a way Ooh, yeah you've got some powerful cards popping out so uh, all three Quan Yin cards for you today on the bottom of the deck number 19 we had the 18 in the bottom of the deck earlier 
Mother of Mercy. So mothering yourself, taking good care of yourself, and supporting and nourishing yourself, and also self-care comes through that. Also, um, accepting support, delegating, um, maybe giving some orders. You remember your mom telling you what to do, nobody's the boss of me. So maybe you need to take a little advice from others, because while I was reading these cards, the Tao cards, it seemed like it was like the rule book, like a bunch of fragments like true, perfect, true perfection seems imperfect, yet it's perfectly itself. Bullet, 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 bullet. It's like maybe you need to go through and itemize all of those things that are putting stress on you unduly or the stresses that you're putting on yourself. And then ask yourself truly, is that really time sensitive? Is it something that you need to do now? Is it something that needs to be made perfect in the moment? Or can, for instance, you make something somewhat imperfect that can be done quickly, efficiently, and get this thing half checked off the list while you can do other things, right? So maybe you can't do it perfect, but that's no reason to be stagnant and to do nothing because if a small step can be made, even if it needs to be revised or revisited later, it's better to do something than to do nothing at all or to just spin your wheels. And if it's not time to get the bigger thing done, if you don't have the resources to get the bigger thing done, doing something small is sometimes just great. Like buying a brand new car, the second you drive it off the lot, you just wasted maybe like 10, 20, 30 grand because now it's not a brand new vehicle. So you just paid full sticker price and if you sell it next week because you rethink it or something, then you lose some of that value maybe. Maybe that's not quite accurate, but it seems right. Where if you then want to go through and get a vehicle with 5,000 miles, that's no longer new. And even though it's still got that huge sticker shock for somebody in my predicament, you know, going out and comparing and saying, well, how less new is this compared to that other one? It probably still has that new car smell. It probably still runs just as perfectly and has just as many opportunities for a brand new warranty. It, you can have just as many add-ons to that. But by accepting your situation, instead of being like, oh, well, I should be different or I wish I could do that. Somebody else got a new car. Well, you don't know how much that person's struggling on the back end. Maybe they have everything loaned out and, and you don't. Maybe your stuff's paid off. Maybe you want to um, build your business with used fleet of vehicles instead of wasting all your cheddar right up front and going out of business in two years or something. Radically accept what you can fix. What is fixable? What doesn't need to be fixed? What's just fine? Or those temporary extenders that you can do like I had to file a tax extension this year. I haven't done that in a while. It's um, what can be done so that you don't become um, caught up in self-judgment or judgment of others. If somebody else is in a different predicament, you know, um, maybe don't get caught up in giving them advice, but look at what your judgments, what you can reflect on. And maybe you do find yourself giving advice and just um, focusing on what works for you, sharing that. <clears throat> the Threshold 39. This is a card of being at the threshold of change, being right at the, the precipice here of shooting through that intentionality and into the next illuminating moment, that miracle breakthrough moment of, yeah, I, I may not be... Um, I just want to pick on the easy ones, rich and famous or whatever, but that doesn't mean I, I do nothing with my time. That doesn't mean that I'm not an influencer. Every person that I that I connect with on a daily base, basis is influenced and changed by their judgments of myself, for better or worse, and I may not be able to control judgments or gossip or or those things, but what I can do is stay in my intentionality. 
So is it about the fame and fortune? Is it about the status or um, where you could, would, should have been at or capable of in this moment? Or is it the radical acceptance of the beauty of where you're at to create miracles in your life? By just radical acceptance of who and what you are, your judgments of others will be almost annihilated. You will be in that that heart led heart home of compassion in allowing things to just flow through you without as much um, personal triggering meaning. Daughter of the Phoenix, this is the moment of the threshold change where, and there's that, that, it's the bird in the hand. The universe is allowing you to burn away your judgments and indifferences through this radical acceptance of self. You are transforming your acceptance of others and the whole self is going through this Phoenix rebirth transformation energy, stepping out of the way and letting flow speak for itself. Because when you're content to simply be yourself and don't compare or compete, everybody will respect you. So it's all about that almighty R-E-S-P-E-C-T and Mother of Mercy. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time reading these cards, but I will read you the six card here, the Phoenix card. I feel like that is the card. Daughter of the Phoenix, when the soul is ready to spread its wings and it goes through a deep cleansing, purification, and preparation for new levels of spiritual wisdom, power and light. Just like the phoenix that is baptized through celestial fire to be born anew, you are going through such a phase of heavenly purification, preparation, and initiation. This is an advanced phase of soul growth, and soon after you will enjoy greater spiritual peace, divine power, and advancement on your divine life path. Kuan Yin, daughter of the phoenix, has been through fire, both physical and heavenly, and has ascended into a position of great spiritual peace, power, and authority. She guides you now to claim your rebirth and ascend. So sorting through your possessions, your life, your um, friend groups, your clothing, your personal image, however you have been approaching something, there's an, um, with this rebirth of self, it's almost like all of a sudden looking through the closet and being like, who, whose clothes are these? Is that really who I was or is or am? Or, um, and then this transformation coming through there. So it seems like a very powerful activation. This must be why I'm called to do three of these today. I think that there are three groups of activations going through before the 7-7 seven, seven portal here in during the time this broadcast so i'm going to cut this one here and if you want to check out the other activations then um check out the part one two and three all three of them and we'll see if all three of the same chakras come out again so yeah third eye solar plexus and heart so far so take care of yourself stay in the flow trace the roots of that judgment to what it is that you can how you can get back into your heart and love yourself fully enough to gift yourself um, balance in your life in some type of a way. So, all right, leaving it there. Take care. Talk to you again real soon.